So I noticed that there's not a lot of resources out there to be able to make your own kind of top-down um, kind of tokens for uh, for use in Roll20 for any of your top-down games. And so I kind of started to look at how I could create my own. Now there's a bunch of different kind of tutorials and stuff out there online that you can find on YouTube, but n none of them are in any good in my opinion. They all seem a little bit, you know, you've kind of got to get some artistry in there, you've got to you know, do some scanning and that sort of stuff. And I kind of started exploring ways of how you could do it without doing all of that stuff. So all you need is is Photoshop. And um, and that is literally literally it, and it's it's easy enough to be able to customize these two however you want. So and you can create tokens uh, that you can use in your roll twenty, just like this one just here. Um, so to be able to do this, what you first need to do is head over to something called HeroForge.com. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for you. Um, and essentially what you want to do is create your character. Um, before we do that, we're literally just going to remove the base by clicking uh, on the on the base that we just selected, get rid of that, and uh, then we can uh, kind of quickly create whichever race we want. So um, just for the sake of it, let's go for a lovely, um, that's screw it, let's just go for a, let's just go for a random, random man. Um, uh, you know, we can we, we can add some clothing onto him. Um, it's a really cool, uh, you know, really cool uh, uh, website. This, um, and you can actually get these three D printed. It does cost quite a bit, but that's not an issue. We're not going to be paying a penny for this at all. So let's just go for this kind of uh, this kind of monk guy. Cool. Um, perfect. Now, once we've got this, if you click and drag, you can actually rotate the screen. Um, and the view of the character. We kind of want a top-down view. You can scroll to kind of zoom out and uh, yeah, we'll kind of get our top-down view. So let's aim for that. Uh, I think that's about 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 right. Um, and now we can click on pose and we can change the pose uh, to whatever we want it to be. Let's go with that. Add an item in, uh, handheld. You've got your left items in your left hand and items in your right hand. So we can just go for a... Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Is there any, any kind of staff or something? Let's have a look. Sure, there's something. Like a quartz staff, something, something monkey. I've probably gone past it. Oh well. Uh, no, that'll do. Cool stuff. Perfect. Um, let's make it uh, two-handed. Lovely stuff. So I'm just kind of lining up um, the view now, so we haven't got any kind of uh, toes sticking out because that will become a little bit of a pain later on. Um, but that is that. That looks fine to me. Uh, like I said, you can scroll in and out. Make sure you scroll all the way out because that's the best. Um, kind of view to use uh, and then we just click screenshot down the bottom instantly that saves so I'm just going to drag this into this kind of assets folder that I've got now and uh, we can completely get rid of that now here's one that the one that I made earlier so let's just go into Photoshop file new uh, 100 by 100 pixels that's absolutely fine uh, let's kind of uh, unlock the background and then get rid of it so that it's transparent uh, hold alt and scroll to zoom in and and then let's drop in if it works our character now it's really small um, but if you hold shift and click the corner and drag it will maintain its size let's zoom out a little bit just to uh, just to help us resize this, uh, it's a little big. Resize it to about there, perfect. Um, and then we can kind of try and get this as central as possible. Lovely stuff, perfect. Um, click the big old tick. Right, so now we have our character, but he's not got any color on it. So now we're going to do what you actually do to color in black and white photographs, if you'd like to do that. Uh, we're doing the exact same technique. Uh, when you load up down the sidebar, you'll see the magic wand tool. It's the fourth one down. If you click and hold click on that, you'll see the quick selection tool. Now, if we just quickly zoom in, now we can actually select different parts of this character. So let's just kind of select some of the robes. Uh, it kind of it kind of guesses what to select. 
um, and it's a bit of a pain so this might take a bit of hit and miss to kind of get used to so you can see that the staff is selected here we want it to be a different color so uh, we uh, kind of hold alt and we can actually kind of unselect that stuff that we don't want uh, da, 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 da. make sure this is all selected we don't want the staff that's good um, Perfect. Lovely, jubbly. In fact, let's just kind of include that hand there. Cool. I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this sometimes. So, uh, yes, perfect. Um, no, no, it's not perfect. A little bit more of the arm. Good. Um, cool. Now that that's selected, let's. Uh, click down here you've got to create a new fill layer or adjustment layer we want to create a solid color layer and this is oh my god I've got my settings uh, bear with me um, they're in grayscale blue um, cool great so I've just gone ahead and, and uh, reselected uh, the previous selection and now we can actually go down here and create a solid color layer which is perfect. Now we choose whatever we want this color to be. You know, let's just create a traditional kind of, I don't know, major guy. Maybe it's going to be like a kind of a bluey color. Um, great. Now we want to change the blending mode where it says normal. Click the drop down box and we want to go down to color. Now, sometimes it can look a little bit dodgy. So this is really, really light. Uh, so sometimes you can actually create that to overlay to fix that and that makes it a little bit darker Still looks a bit naff in my opinion. So let's stick with color and we can double click here to actually change the color make it darker Doesn't seem to be having too much effect because the image is so light So let's click back on the layer one, which is the image that uh, of the of the wizard um, and we can go into uh, image and adjustments and uh, Levels or curves. I normally prefer curves, but you know whatever you like you have a play around with that you can make it a little bit darker you can crush the whites crush the blacks that sort of thing uh, da, 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 da. cool that'll that'll do that's fine um great uh now the staff is still gray um so let's do the exact same thing uh, Make sure you're on the wizard layer and then start selecting what you want to select. Again, it starts to guess when you kind of drag over this image. So it will end up, most likely will anyway, kind of selecting the whole image, which we don't want because it's an absolute idiot. Uh, hold, alt, and kind of drag again to deselect the areas that we don't want, uh, which is pretty much everything. Do, 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 do. bit more of the staff here I think uh, and that will that'll do cool so again we're clicking down here to add a new uh, kind of adjustment layer or color layer click solid color what color do we want it to be we want it to be a kind of brown color I guess brown's the most common color that I've seen to be using on these images. Um, cool. Change the blending mode here down to color again. We now have a wooden quarter staff. Hooray! Um, again, you can change the colors. You can tweak that here um, if you wanted to. So you, if you wanted a bright red one, you could, but we, we, we don't. So let's cancel that out. Now, looks okay. You know, not that great. We zoomed in quite far. If we zoom out, yeah, it looks a little bit nicer. Um, so brilliant you can add in any more detail so you know if we wanted to we could add in a uh, you know we could select just his hood or something like that create another kind of adjustment layer or solid color layer sorry and we can make that a, a, a kind of a more of a purpley color maybe and that might be quite nice let's go with that straight to the top uh, and make that color so we've got something a little bit more purpley on top I don't like that but I'm just trying to show you that you can add some more details in rather than just uh, you know the two colors of a staff and a robe um, so yeah let's uh, let's ditch that great now let's uh, if you shift if you hold shift and 
uh, click the top layer and well, from the bottom layer you'll select them all right click uh, and you want to merge these layers perfect click control or command j and you'll duplicate it and the one on the top we then want to make black and white now you can create alpha mats or luma mats and that sort of stuff but let's just keep this simple so let's go to image adjustments curves and let's just wash it out completely we want this to be like a black uh, silhouette so i've done some curves i'm going to do the levels actually because that's probably a lot lot easier great uh, that looks like it will be fine. So now we have got the uh, black layer over the top. It's a little bit pointless at the moment. So let's blur it. So if we go on to filter, uh, we want to go on to blur and let's go to uh, box blur. There it is. Uh, about three pixels is normally fine and that will blur it just a tad around the edges. Now what we can do is uh, You've got the move tool here, so make sure you've got the move tool selected. Hit Control or Command and then T, and then you can actually start to resize it. Um, so you can see we can move it around, we can uh, make it small or big or whatever. If you hold Control or Command, you'll see that the arrow kind of goes white when you hover over these corner move points. Um, that means that you can just move that one point, which is pretty damn cool. So let's kind of move it to where we think that a shadow might be quite nice. Uh, so let's say something, something like that might be pretty good. Um, great. But it's over the top, so let's just put it below. And therefore, way we have a shadow. Still a bit dark in some places, so normally I turn down the opacity to about 60, uh, sometimes 70, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Uh, great, so now we have a shadow. Hooray! Um, but there's still not quite a lot of detail so let's duplicate that layer again again control j or command j and let's just go to uh, adjustments and what do we want we want levels and let's kind of um hmm, uh, yes let's kind of move this one here just to kind of get a bit more of the of the darker lines in there great um, let's go on to uh, adjustments again and brightness and contrast. We want to just kind of uh, notch up that, con that contrast there. Great. Now that looks naff. Don't get me wrong. It looks awful. Um, but what we're going to do is just kind of turn down the uh, opacity um, and kind of make it uh, to somewhere that we're happy with. You can tell it's got a little bit more depth to it now. It feels a little bit more 3D. So. Normally uh, around 50% uh, opacity is gorgeous. Brilliant. And that's pretty much it. We want to go to file, export. I normally go for a quick export as PNG. You want to save it as a PNG so it's got a transparent background. Um, go to the folder that you want to save it to and uh, save it. Let's just call it wizard. Great. Saved. Now we can go to our Roll20 game or whatever and uh, just literally just upload it as you would. So let's just upload the wizard. Takes a time, Roll20, pain in the ass. Come on. Great. And then just uh, drag it on. Oops. Just drag it on as if you would, as if it was, if it was a normal character. And there you are, you've got your character. You can resize them, you can do whatever you want to with them. Perfect. So I'm going to create another video soon, which kind of goes into detail about how you can do this and use the exact same technique, just with a few slight changes and filters and whatnot, to actually create your own front facing artwork. So this is something which I made using the exact same method. Um, you can make it so that it's not got a background, so you can drop it onto a nice fancy looking background if you wanted to, but it looks fine being on white. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. But uh, I hope this I hope this really helps you out. Um, let me know what you think. And I think importantly as well, share some of your photos and some of your images of what you create. Because that would be really, really cool to, to see what you can do with this. Um, but yeah, that's all for now. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe.